All right. Uh, again, welcome everyone to the webinar tonight. And many of you already know Dr. Sami. He has done some excellent presentations for us, and he, he has become uh, <laughs> uh, he has become a very, very good friend, a very great support of us on, on these webinars. And uh, and uh, he has done. I think he did some something on chiro the chiropractic and showed some amazing, amazing pictures and graphics on how the, the, the spinal cord, the vertebrae, can control the rest of the body and what you need to do to, to strengthen them. Dr. Harry, too, did some really great presentations for us last year, and we're so excited to have him back on. I know he's been doing a lot of webinars. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he did a webinar just before he came on to this webinar tonight. So he has been really, really busy doing webinars. <laughs> Uh, helping people all over the country and all over the world understand heart health. And it's going to be in two parts. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure how they, they're going to divide this up, but I know we'll be talking about testings, how you can ineffectively, uh, in, inexpensively, excuse me, test the integrity of your cardiovascular system and make the right um, choices, and make the right adjustments, and uh, provide the right nutrients to be able to ensure that your cardiovascular system is protected and healthy. All right, without much further ado, uh, Dr. Harry, are you on? Yes. All right, well, thank you so much for, for taking the time to do, do this webinar. And uh, Dr. Steve? I'm here. Okay, great, Dr. Steve. Thank you again, and we appreciate all your help. Uh, I'm just going to hand it over to you, Steve, and um, I'll just be chiming in from time to time, but I'll just let you guys both dance, and I'll be dealing with the questions in the background. All right, thank you, Dr. David. Uh, I tell you, uh, it's just a, a pleasure, it's an honor to be invited on your call as your listeners have been hearing the quality of the speakers that you guys have had on uh, is just very impressive. Thank and, you. Uh, it's very humbling, actually, to, to be asked to come on, and it really uh, it sets the bar at a quite a high standard, and so uh, I'm actually kind of nervous, especially with Dr. <laughs> Harry. Uh, being being preceding uh, my part of the call, but I get the uh, pleasure of introducing Dr. Harry as I see his, uh, uh, I think his webinar is, yep, he's going to be setting up. And, and so I'm not going to talk very much, but Dr. Harry Elward, uh, naturopath, or I, I consider uh, one of the top naturopaths in the country, if not the world. Dr. Harry has a passion, as you'll very quickly uh, understand, uh, on on the heart. He has a big heart for other people. He's been traveling, as Dr. David mentioned, all over the country, and, and he's pioneering this field. And he's working with top companies in the world to be able to get uh, to keep this cost down. This very uh, important test that you guys are going to understand. So, uh, Dr. Harry, I know you've got other things that you might want to talk about in terms of your background, and you'll work some of these things into the uh, to the talk. But uh, just uh, so. Uh, honored to be able to uh, um, introduce you, and I'm just going to turn things over to you, and then uh, and then you can do the same thing when you're done. Then I'll come back on and kind of wrap things up. So, Dr. Harry Elwood, uh, take it away. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, thank you so much, Steve, for that uh, very warm uh, introduction, and I hope I can live up to <laughs> my high expectations. Um, tonight's talk is called the Cardiovascular Cure. Um, I actually by choice did not watch the Obama uh, speech last night because what we don't need in this country is health, more health insurance. What we need is health assurance and so that's what I'm going to be talking about tonight, how we can have health assurance and uh, we're going to be looking at the number one killer in the world today, not only in America but around the world um, and the problem is heart disease. 2,500 Americans will die today of heart disease. 2,500 Americans will die tomorrow of heart disease. 2,500 day, the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Now, that number just kind of rolls off the tongue, you know, 2,500, and we can't really get a grip or visualize it. Well, let me help you visualize it here for a second. First thing, it would be equivalent to one football stadium being emptied every 30 days. Think about that. Have you ever been to a college? I know my daughter went to uh, Illinois State, or not Illinois State, uh, University of Illinois, which is a top 10 school, and I would go there for the football games, and there would be 50,000, 60,000 fans in the audience. 
Think about that many people every 30 days dying from heart disease. Or to put it in another perspective, six jumbo jets, that's 747s, crashing each and every day, and everybody on board dying. Six jumbo jets crashing each and every day. Or how about this, 9-11 happening each and every day. Now, we're committed to remember 9-11 um, and um, the people that perished in that, uh, in that uh, incident that happened on American soil. But think about this. That happens every day. The amount of people that, that died in that happened every day, and nobody's saying anything about it. My name is Dr. Harry Elworth, and I've written a book called Let's Stop the Number One Killer of Americans Today. And it's a, it's a natural approach to preventing and reversing heart disease. I'm here to tell you that dying of natural causes, which is a heart attack, is nothing natural. No more natural than walking out onto the expressway and stepping in front of an 18-wheeler barreling down on you. There's nothing natural about that. And I'm at inviting all of you on the call today to join the crusade. We can win the war against heart disease. Fatal heart attacks happen all the time. I mean, if you think about it, 2,500 people dying every day of heart disease. Well, come on. It's, it, does, it certainly doesn't make the news unless you're Michael Jackson, you know, or somebody <clears throat> big like that. <clears throat> How about this? Damian Nash, 24-year-old, running back for the Denver Broncos, and um, he collapsed and died in a charity basketball game. And here's a guy that's in, in prime condition, you know, fit, you know, peak of life, and he collapses and dies. No prior warning whatsoever. Or this gentleman, John Spencer, at age 58, he's a Emmy Award-winning actor for the best uh, Emmy Award-winning show, uh, West Wing. His actor died, and then three months in real life, he died. I mean, you'd think he would recognize the signs and actually put a stop to it, but he never got that opportunity. Or this gentleman, Tim Russert. Tim Russert, come on. He did everything his doctor told him to do. He was on the treadmill every day. He was watching his diet. He was taking his prescription medicines of cholesterol and diabetes and blood pressure. Yet everything his doctor told him to do wasn't enough to save his life. And while at work, um, he had a massive heart attack and died with no prior warnings and given a clean bill of health two weeks before during a physical. Or this gentleman, Dennis Johnson, was a three-time world champion, played with the Boston Celtics and Larry Bird, and um, while coaching his professional team in just a practice session, he walked outside on his way to his car, collapsed, and died. No prior history, no prior warning. I just talked to a lady tonight. Um, that told me that her, her pastor of her church ran, uh, you know, 10 miles a day, was in excellent health, died Christmas morning with no prior history, no prior warning, no nothing. It happens all the time. 2,500 Americans. Now, I like to, I look at these gentlemen, I look at their ages and how young they are. And I want to look at Dennis Johnson. When I first put this talk together, I was actually 52 years old. Now, I'm 55, so I've progressed. Now, if I would have died at age 52, I often think, what would I have missed out on? What epic parts of my life would I have missed out on? Well, one of them would be walking my daughter down the aisle. Any father who, who has a daughter, that's a very proud moment for you to walk your, your beautiful baby down the aisle, your princess, and to dance with her at the, at the reception. That is a proud moment that I would have, some other person would have walked her down the aisle had I died at age 52. Four months later, I walked my other daughter down the aisle. Now, lucky for me, I ran out of daughters because I certainly ran out of money. <laughs> but that is a proud moment for a father. And you know what? Someday they're going to have grandchildren, and I'm going to go to t-ball games, and I'm going to go to graduations, and I'm going to go to prom, not to the prom, but, you know, prom <laughs> pictures and different things like that because I'm going to live to 120 years old because the Bible says and we are genetically designed to live that long, and I'm going to uphold that because I'm doing everything for my health assurance. Heart disease is our number one killer. It accounts for 50% of all deaths in the U.S. There's a heart attack every 20 seconds. There's actually a death every 60 seconds, over 1 million heart attacks every year. It kills more than the next nine causes of death, and believe it or not, it's a global problem. It's just a, no, not just an American problem. This is a, a world clock that shows deaths around the world. I just pulled this down at 734 Eastern Standard Time on today. It shows that cardiovascular disease, 10 million people died from cardiovascular disease. 
up until this point, just this year. Now, if we were to add respiratory, which is also cardiovascular, and diabetes, which is also complicates cardiovascular, you're looking at 13 million people, or one-third of the 34 million people that have died so far have died from cardiovascular disease. So it is a major global problem. And it's not just a man killer. We think of heart disease as, as, as a man problem, not a woman problem. However, if we were to compare it to breast cancer, which accounts for about 43,000 deaths every year, you can see heart disease is over 500,000. One out of every 2.5 women will die of heart disease, and oftentimes for the woman, the very first heart attack they have is fatal. Men might have two or three. Women, first one is fatal. And what about our youth? You know that 60% of our youth are already at risk. A study showed that 5 to 10-year-olds already had a risk factor of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high insulin levels. Yeah. Well, you think uh, our fast food Western diet has anything to do with that? Of course it does. We are all taking time bombs. Sudden cardiac death accounts for 300,000 deaths every year. It's one every 60 seconds. Now, this is the, the type of death where you get no warning. The other type of, of heart attack is called coronary artery disease, where your arteries are blocked and oxygen is cut off to the heart. But you get warning signs for that. You get chest pain. You get pain in your arm. You get dizzy spells. You get numbness, different things that indicate that. But for sudden cardiac death, that's when the heart all of a sudden starts to fibrillate or beat irre irregularly, and then all of a sudden it starves your brain of oxygen, you pass out, and in seven minutes you're dead. 95% die before reaching the hospital, 70% die at home, 100,000 athletes die each year from sun cardiac death, so it's not just the couch potatoes that are working uh, feverishly behind the computer or playing video games or watching TV and drinking uh, Bud Lights, but it's actually 100,000 athletes. And sun cardiac death takes the lives of six children every week. These are the teenagers who are playing basketball and football and swimming and so on that, that drop dead suddenly. Almost one-third of sun cardiac deaths uh, outside of homes and hospitals, current fitness clubs or sports facilities, according to the American Heart Association, places where people are going to be healthy, where people are going to get fit, and they end up dying. Many signs of heart disease, this is what your blood looks like, and this is what your blood looks like after McDonald's or Burger King or K K Kentucky Fried or any fast food restaurant. You can see that fat does not mix well in the blood. Now, this is a beautiful artery right here. This is what we should look like. This is what Americans look like. We have inflammation. We've got plaque. We've got calcium deposit. All of this contributes to 70% blockage. At this point, by the way, somebody needs to mute their mic because there's a lot of background noise going on. 70% um, blockage. There are absolutely no signs or symptoms of, of heart disease. By 90%, you can see this here, now of Or something like that. So, and it's not only the heart, it could happen to your brain. It's called a brain attack or a stroke. Or it can happen to your kidneys where you have kidney failures. Or it can happen to your peripheral arteries which feed your legs that you end up uh, with gangrene and critical limb ischemia, 750,000 cases with 200,000 cases of amputation every year. So it's not a, a pretty sight. Standard medical treatment is failing and failing big, big time. The choice is drugs or surgery, or I like to say brain or rotor root. Because really drugs, all it does is, is kind of thins your blood, and, and, but it doesn't cure the problem. And surgery certainly doesn't cure the problem. It just puts a Band-Aid on the problem. And even a bypass by taking an a artery out of your leg that might be 50% blocked to replace a 90% block in your heart artery, within 5 to 10 years you need another bypass. And any time you go through these procedures, you have a 10% risk of having a heart attack or stroke while on the table. There, you know what, how are we going to beat this? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at something called SHAPE, which was a task force created with 40 cardiologists. These are heart doctors. And they call themselves Screening for Heart Attack Prevention and Education. They reported in the American Journal of Cardiology, July 2006, they said, we need prevention before intervention. And this is what they called for. 90,000 deaths can be prevented from cardiovascular disease, and we can save $21 billion annually. How are we going to do that? Well, the guidelines call for non-invasive, which means no pain, no, no needles, no blood, no tears, nothing like that at all. Uh, screening for all asymptomatic, which means no symptoms, 
men starting at age 45 and women starting at age 55. Now remember, 300,000 people, the first system is death. So what they're saying here is if we can treat people before they're having symptoms, test them and see what's going on, we can save 90,000, but really you can save 300,000 lives. Now they conclude by saying we hope to build new momentum in cardiology that inspires physicians to use modern technologies for prevention of a heart attack rather than using expensive technologies only to treat a heart attack. Now this is 40 cardiologists speaking to, 40 car to, to their peers, cardiologists, and this is what they say, which is too late and results in benefits too little to benefit patients. So what they're saying is by the time they come to us, it is too late, there's very little we can do for them, and we are bankrupting the system, which is why we have this big fight on healthcare. Early detection is critical. American Heart Association recommends a cardio screening for everyone over 20. Oprah Winfrey, on one of her shows, she had a cardiac screening. She recommended it. She thought it was the cat's meow. She recommended it for everyone. I called the company here in Chicago that did that screening. It cost $2,000. I have to ask you, if you're walking through, proceeding through life and you feel great, you're not having any symptoms, would you pay $2,000 uh, to have a, a, a quick screening done? Or maybe would you pay a car payment or maybe a mortgage payment or something like that or pay or like me, college payment for my kids. No, we wouldn't spend the money. We wouldn't spend it. By the way, she had what was called a CT scan. The radiation given off in that CT scan is, is the equivalent to being one mile from the epic center of Hiroshima or Nagasaki. That much radiation over time will actually lead to mutation of, of, of cells which actually will lead to cancer. So it's not something that you want to get done unnecessarily. Now, we do have what's called the Digital Pulse Wave Analyzer. It's an FDA-cleared class two medical device that basically gets a snapshot of your arteries. It will test your heart rate, heart strength, artery flexibility, artery blockage, hydration levels, and overall cardiovascular health. That's the ball. It is quick, affordable, painless, and reliable. This device in seven, 60 seconds will do the equivalent of an electrocardiogram, an echocardiogram, a duplex Doppler, a pulse oximeter, a CVD profiler, heart rate variability, augmentation index, and an MRI. That testing in a hospital will run you somewhere between $2,500 to $5,000. What's really great about our program is we have trained, highly trained technicians that will give you a printout right on the spot and evaluate it for you right on the spot. If you've ever had a lifeline screening done, it's 140 bucks, and you got to wait 21 days for somebody to call you up. Most of the time, a doctor who's going to want you to come in and pay another 50 to 75 dollars for a visit for him to put you on prescription drugs. So this, you get on the spot. It will show you all these different things: how your circulation is, the how strong your heart is, and everything like that. Um, it will also grade you from A to G. A being excellent, G being a clinical event, a heart attack or a stroke waiting to happen. I don't oftentimes see a G, but if I do 200 people, I'll have one or two Gs. These are people walking around not even knowing that they are a walking, ticking time bomb. Best of all, this is quick, painless, and affordable. First we test the person, then we review with the person, then we advise the person, then we make our recommendations, and we have another satisfied client. What's your preference? You can be a, have a chronicle chronological age of 30 with an arterial age of 60, or you can have a chronological age of thir uh, 60 with a biological age of 30. I prefer the reverse. In fact, I am 55 and my arteries are 29 years old when I test on this machine. Now, the best thing of what we're offering people is a solution. We're not just saying, hey, you're a G, good luck. No, we're actually offering them a, so a solution, and for the first time, it's something in nature that has incredible science backing it up. Three Americans won the Nobel Prize in 1998 on something called nitric oxide gas. Quite by accident, they discovered in working with nitroglycerin that also produces nitric oxide gas, and they figured out, hey, if the body is using this, then the body must be producing it itself. Well, that led to the Nobel Prize, and they were absolutely true. Nitroglycerin, which came around in 1902, actually was discovered at dynamite factories that the people working in the dynamite factories experienced no chest pain, angina, but when they go home, it would develop, then they go back to work, it would disappear. So they figured out that the nitroglycerin in that factory was a cure. But is it a cure? Well, 
Alfred Nobel, who actually discovered dynamite and became a multi-multi-billionaire, and back then, that, that was well, that's a lot of money now, but it was even more money back then, um, he, in his 60s, developed coronary artery disease, where he developed angina. And he went to his doctor, and they recommended nitroglycerin. He would not take it because he knew the damaging effect of nitroglycerin. His brother and father both died in accidents while they were trying to discover something for nitroglycerin. And uh, so he wouldn't take it. And when he died at age 64 of a massive heart attack, he, he put his money in a, a Swiss bank account. And the interest from that money goes to pay all the Nobel Prizes. Well, how ironic that years later, that in 1998, three gentlemen won the Nobel Prize on the role that nitric oxide produced from nitroglycerin actually plays in the heart. Now, this gentleman down here, one of our, uh, our, our presidents, he actually also developed coronary artery disease, and he had it so bad that he took nitroglycerin while he gave State of the Union addresses on television. You can see him popping his pills. Well, he died at age 64 of a massive heart attack, so nitroglycerin is not the cure. It is only a band-aid, and eventually will lead to a heart attack. But nitric oxide, the effect of it is the cure. It dilates blood vessels, increasing blood flow, not only to the heart, but all over where the blood flows. So every organ, the kidneys, the liver, the spleen, the gallbladder, the lungs, the brain, every organ of the body will benefit from the production of nitric oxide or increase in, uh, in oxygen and supply will protect the heart and all the organs and it, it turns the endothelium which is the inner walls of the arteries, veins and capillaries into Teflon so that nothing sticks to it. So I, I tell people who call me all the time about cholesterol and I say cholesterol is guilt by association. They cut somebody open, there's a lot of cholesterol, they say it killed them. No, it didn't kill them. It was something called homocysteine which turns the arteries into rusty pipes so cholesterol has something to stick on. What nitric oxide does is actually prevents that from happening. Your cholesterol could be 600. If your body is, liver is producing it, it's for a reason because your hormones or your brain or something in your body needs it. So it would just go through your body and, 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 and be uh, uh, removed uh, through the adequate measures versus sticking to the blood vessel wall when you don't have enough nitric oxide. In fact, Jonathan Stamler, Duke University, says nitric oxide does everything everywhere in the body. You cannot name one physiological function which nitric oxide does not play a critical role. We have nine different systems in our body. Every one of those systems will benefit from the production of nitric oxide, whether it's the respiratory or cardiovascular or nervous system or the sexual system, the, the excretory, the skeletal. Every system of your body will benefit. What causes a decrease in nitric oxide? Age, unfortunately, the older you get, everything goes out the window. Heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, cholesterol, homocysteine, C-reactive protein, all these will lower nitric oxide, neurological damage, arthritis, allergies, ulcers. If you have any of these, you probably have prescription drugs. That lowers it even more. Alcohol, tobacco use, trans fatty acids. I'm sorry to say it just doesn't mean those elephant ears and funnel cakes and french fries, but also is, is fried chicken, fried fish, cookies, candy, potato chips, yes, even those Pringles, which I love, all those contain trans fatty. Well, actually, they're making pring Pringles now without trans fat. I don't know how they're doing that. But um, all those things contain trans fatty acids and, and complicate and turn your blood into that thick sludge. Sickle cell disease also. How to increase nitric oxide? Bad news is exercise. Good news is you'd have to exercise 24 hours a day, seven days a week to produce enough nitric oxide. Since we can't seem to give it 10 minutes, I don't think that's possible. Next thing is a healthy diet. Okay, he's going to talk about the green stuff, the fruits and vegetables, 30 servings a day. No, I'm not. Actually, those are wonderful for you. They prevent free radical damage, great antioxidants, but they will not produce nitric oxide and cure cardiovascular disease. Dr. Salvador Moncada in England discovered the endothelium, remember that inner wall of the arteries, uses arginine to produce nitric oxide. What is arginine? It's one of the 22 natural occurring amino acids found in protein. Um, so we get our, we should get 30% protein in our in our, our daily meals, and um, it's the building block of all our cells. Well, arginine is just one of those amino acids. This book is out of print, but I consider it one of the best arginine uh, books on the market, called the Arginine Solution. These two doctors said in the field of medicine and health, it is one of the revolutions of our time. 
the discovery that the amino acid arginine may be the magic bullet for the cardiovascular system. In fact, on the cover it says open clogged arteries, reduce risk of heart disease, boost potency with natural alternative Viagra, improve your immune system. They called it the miracle molecule. John Cook in 2004 came out with this book. He's a chief of vascular medicine and a top cardiologist in this country at Stanford uh, Medical Center. Uh, and he says this that your body can actually produce its own heart medicine and that we all have this magic within us and that magic is the ability that the body can produce nitric oxide if you give it the proper raw materials it needs to heal itself what you do with the magic is up to you he also proved that it melts away uh, plaque this is a before and after shot in his book he says this nitric oxide burns off in the blood it removes plaque with it so it actually melts away plaque now, if you go to your cardiologist, he will tell you that it's not possible and it never happened. And I'm here to tell you that I have testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony showing people with 100% uh, blockage in carotid arteries and, and coronary arteries that have gone in and within 30 days were sent home because the plaque had suddenly disappeared, mysteriously disappeared. Medically published clinical studies demand you to, to, this type of evidence demands you to make a verdict, um, shows that arginine produced from nitric oxide will lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol triglycerides, it will improve diabetes, improve sexual function in men and women, reduce blood clots and strokes, improves congestive heart failure, improve wound healing, improve kidney and liver function, improve short-term, long-term memory and cognitive functions, increase the human growth hormone, which is completely anti-aging, and improves muscle growth and performance. Performance. Here's just one of those 96,000 studies. If you want to call me later, I can go through the other 95,900 or whatever. But in this one study, which was done in 2000, published in American Heart Association, these are patients with stable angina. Now, unstable angina is a heart attack. Stable angina is people living with chest pain, okay? And it could be severe, it might be slight, but they live with it on a daily basis. They might live five, six, seven years with it that way. So they gave these patients three months of drugs, and you can see, in these, in, in these parameters that there was actually below normal in, in, in helping them. Now we look at intensified medical treatment three months after a bypass, and yippee, we've got some improvement here, barely. Now we look at arginine, and not three months after ar arginine, but just two weeks of arginine use, and look at the difference in vitality, physical functioning, role of physical, and pain reduction. Pain reduction. How many people that I get started on, on, on arginine tell me that they never have another chest pain? And actually, the act, non-addictive active ingredient in morphine is nitric oxide. So it is great as a anti-inflammatory. What about arginine and diabetes? Well, we know that diabetes is an epidemic. 8% of all Americans have it. 24 million are diabetic. 57 million are pre-diabetic. We know that obe obesity in America is out of control. We also know that sugar consumption is out of control. In the year 1900, the average American ate 5 pounds of sugar a year. Today, it's 150 pounds of sugar. And we know the end stage results to diabetes is a heart attack, a stroke, blindness, kidney failure, or amputation, which is not a very pretty sight. You know what, those, those people that um, have diabetes develop peripheral arterial disease where blood circulation to their legs is cut off. Slowly that leads to something called critical ischemia. We have 750,000 new cases every year, which leads to 200,000 amputations each and every year. Not a pretty sight. And I'm here to tell you that arginine and diabetes, this is Dr. Pendergrass. He used to send 240 of his patients as an endocrinologist who had diabetes to see uh, three cardiologists uh, facing the end stage results. In 10 years using arginine in his practice, he no longer sent 240 patients a year. In fact, in 10 years, he only sent one patient. So that's what arginine will do for diabetes. It is the answer to the sexual revolution. Time Magazine came out with a wonderful, uh, complete, I mean, the whole issue was dedicated to sex. They said, making love can boost the heart, relieve pain, and keep you healthy. And every man on this phone call can uh, pay me later for that statement. 80% of sexual dysfunction is directly attributed to nitric oxide failure, according to New England Journal of Medicine. Scientists proved definitively that nitric oxide translates to sexual potency. Science Magazine said that. And arginine can improve a woman's sexual desire and overall satisfaction, according to a Stanford study. 
you know what, Dr. Lignaro says it best. Um, he says, you know what, you don't have to wait for the rest of the world to see the light and the drug companies to put new nitric oxide-based prescription drugs on the market in order to take advantage of what nitric oxide has to offer. Even if you have high blood pressure, have suffered a heart attack, or at high risk, you can beat the odds. The power to lead an entirely new and healthier life is in your in your hand. Carpe diem, seize the day, start boosting your nitric oxide production right now. And in an interview, a video interview, he talks about this book and why he wrote this book. And he says in that interview, uh, I can't show it on a, on, a, on a call like this, but in my presentations I show it. He says that, you know what, I, spent, I dedicated 30 years of my life to, to learning what nitric oxide does in the body. But you know what, nobody reads the hundreds of papers that I got published. Nobody reads those papers, so I wanted to come out with a book that maybe can be a bestseller that can actually help save millions of lives. That's right, millions of lives. So the solution is simple, people. It's arginine. It is a simple amino acid called arginine. How much do you need? According to Dr. Louis Gnarl, he recommends five grams of arginine a day. Now that would equate to about 58 pills at GNC or any health food store, and they're rather large 500 to 1,000 milligram pills because you're only getting 20% absorption when you take a pill. However, you can also get it in a liquid form or a powder which dissolves into a liquid would be your best bet, and with that you get 98% of absorption. Arginine is safe to take with cholesterol-lowering drugs, aspirin anticoagulants, calcium channel blockers, digitalase inhibitors, beta blockers, diuretics, antiarrhythmics, and antidepressants or anti-anxiety drugs. Do not take with nitroglycerin, and please always check with your doctor before making any changes. But this is what the typical American looks like. I mean, just a, a, a medicine cabinet full of drugs that actually lower nitric oxide even more. Now, I have to warn you, according to the FDA, uh, it's kind of mandatory for doctors to tell you the side effects or what you can expect. You've seen the uh, wonderful TV commercials where they actually, uh, you know, show the smiley, happy people who have uh, diabetes or erectile dysfunction or whatever, and then at the very end, they, they in, you know, in 500 words a minute, uh, tell you that, uh, well, you can develop blindness or you can lose your hearing or your kidney can fail or you can die or have a stroke or whatever. Well, here are your side effects. And I apologize, but I have to do this. You're going to have increased energy, improved memory, increased immune system, improved sleep, increased muscle tone, loss of weight, decrease in pain, better athletic performance, quicker wounding, increased sexual function, and less prescription medicine. I know those are awful. I know they are terribly awful, but I think it's worth the risk. Now, here are your options. People say, well, what's this going to cost me? Well, option A costs you absolutely nothing. Actually, someday, option A will lead to a 911 call. Well, that's free. But that's where it stops because you're going to go for an ambulance ride, and that's $1,000 because you're under cardiac arrest. You'll be met by the ER specialist in the emergency room. He's going to charge $350 to take a peek. They're going to run an EKG test. That's $366. Then do cardiac catheterization, which is $5,600. Now they're going to rush you up to OR, and they're going to put in an angioplasty stent or bypass. That's $50,000 for one. Of course, if you need a double, triple, quadruple, quintuple, and so on, that greatly ups the price. You want to be asleep for that, so the anesthesiologist gets his cut, which is $7,000. 12 hours in a recovery room, $2,800. Two days in intensive care, $5,200. Hospital stay for five days, $9,400. This doesn't include your loss of pay because you're off work, your medications, and for some people, home hospice when you get home. Now, this also doesn't include an option A. 10% of people who go through option A and actually end up on a table will actually experience something called complications. What kind of complications? Heart attack or stroke. So this also doesn't include programs, casket, plot, and services, another $7,500 because you didn't make it. Total bill is $93,490. I just talked to a guy today. He had a two stents put in. It was $154,000. And you know what? Quickly, you max out your insurance, so the next time you need another stent, which is called restenosis, which can happen in as little as 60 days to, to a year, um, you can't afford it because they say, you're out, man. We, you, you've maxed out your insurance. Now, option B, one DPA test, $50. One month of arginine, $40. Uh, total price, $90. Peace of mind is priceless. The bottom line, people, it's, it's really your health. It's your choice. You know, we've become lazy. 
we just wait for something to go wrong, then we go to the doctor, and um, he's been, um, you know, he's been indoctrinated into, learn, here's a symptom, here's a drug, see you next month. And, oh, you develop some side effect to that, here's a drug for that. Oh, you got this now, well, here's a drug for that. Okay, you got that, here's a drug for that. Pretty soon you're on 10 to 15 different medications. You feel like garbage. You wake up in the morning, you take a handful of pills, and that's where your day ends because you don't remember who you are, who, where you are, or anything like that. Well, if you would take the time and actually educate yourself, and those of you on the call obviously are doing that, but it's your health, it's your choice. Don't leave it up to a man because he has a white coat and has a nice plaque behind his desk. It's choices you make, not leaving it to chance, that will determine our wellness and our destiny. And with that, I wish to thank all of you. And I will turn it over now to uh, Steve Summy, Dr. Steve Summy from the great state of Colorado, which is the, uh, what is that, the snow state? <laughs> I don't even know. But uh, Steve, are you question. on the call? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great job, Dr. Harry. I uh, really appreciate you taking your time and coming on. And I'm always impressed by your new material that you put in. As you know, uh, because you've been on top of this subject better than anybody else that I know of in this country, uh, it's changing very rapidly, just like we know that when we're on the Internet. Uh, the last time I checked, it was like over 40,000, actually not the last time, but uh, medically published studies on arginine, and uh, I know you sent out something recently, 94,000, I think now it's up to 97,000 peer-reviewed uh, research clinical studies on arginine. And uh, so it's amazing how you keep on top of the subject, and you really keep us uh, uh, practitioners on our toes. When I saw this, when I read your book, and I know uh, it's, it's not in your nature to promote your own book, but... Uh, the, uh, the mission that you're on, is, is the title of the book is, Let's Stop the Number One Killer of Americans Now. And when I read that book, uh, I, I was amazed. And, and, and that's one of the things that I, I emphasized was uh, uh, in my undergraduate school was human performance, stress testing. We put people on uh, the EKGs and, and exercise them and checked out. Most of these were athletes. Uh, and so I thought I knew a lot about this area, but uh, in, in 20... Uh, eight years of practice, uh, you're, you're still going strong. You, you've been in, in, in practice and naturopathic practice longer than I've been in chiropractic practice, but uh, I'm, I'm now I'm going on 30 years, and, uh, and it amazes me how you keep up with this subject. So I really appreciate your, your time and, and a great job on that presentation. Thank you, Steve. So, Sherry, I'm going to uh, let you, I know Dave, uh, David, uh, maybe there somewhere in the background as well. Um, uh, it's just and, me. Uh, it's just me, Steve. Sherry isn't here. Oh, okay. Oh, we're in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, whenever you're ready, we'll go ahead and, uh, and uh, flip things over. I've got my presentation oh. ready to go. Yes, sir. Right away. Okay. And I probably have to do something myself. Yeah, show my screen. I'll click on that. All right, and I'm going to kick the slideshow on. Can you see this? Yes, we can. Terrific. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just so impressed with uh, the professionalism and the expertise of Dr. Harry Elwood. And If you don't have his book uh, out there, uh, you can uh, send a message. In fact, uh, uh, Dr. Harry, if you're... Uh, if you're there, uh, maybe you can give the listeners your website or your uh, contact information if they want to order your book. Um, yeah, they can call my office at 630-961-5500. Uh, or they can order it off my website, however, um, either or. And my website is thehealthguardian.com, which is T-H-E, the healthguardian.com. I'm going to type it into the chat box so everybody can get it. Terrific. Yeah, so uh, I know we're, when I saw this, uh, I was compelled. In fact, uh, Ruth Ann is uh, our DPA technician in our office here. She, she saw this, and she just immediately jumped on board. She said, I want the machine. I want to get certified.
side, and, and of course, uh, I, I had to do the same thing, so I followed right behind her, but uh, um, we have now, with, with my fiance, Leslie, and uh, Lonnie, when she joins us periodically, she's uh, working outside the office right now, but we have four DPA technicians in my office. And so I was trained as a chiropractor that the brain and spinal cord were the most important systems in the body. And uh, we did a webinar a few weeks ago, and we showed a 3D image of, of uh, the spine and the development of the nervous system. And we know that that's the first organized system that actually develops from the two fertilized you know, the sperm cell and the egg cell. Uh, and so we were trained that this is the most important system. It's the first system that develops. Uh, everything else develops after the nervous system. And so in practice, uh, as I learn about this technology, I learn about how important the heart is. You know, people can come in and they can get adjusted and they can, their spine can be functioning perfectly well, but if their heart stops, they're dead. And so this is a, an important thing. And the American Heart Association said, uh, everyone over, I believe it was like 25 years of age, needs to have some type of low-cost screening. This is a perfect answer. And uh, Dr. Harry has really taken the, the uh, reins and, and uh, really driven this home. We, we, we are looking for more technicians. If you're out there, if you have uh, a passion for helping people, uh, you can contact either myself or Dr. Harry. And, uh, and so he's doing a, a great job traveling literally all over the world. And, uh, and keeping that cost of the machine down to as low as possible because we heard that they're in the process of getting ready to like double in price. And so, uh, but, but he's doing a great job of being able to keep that down. So I'm going to just move right into my uh, presentation. I know we've been kind of going back and forth. And one of the things in the last year and a half that, that Dr. Harry is impressed with me is, is the ability to, uh, to be able to impact people's lives from a, a heart standpoint. And, and, uh, I also, and Dr. Harry didn't bring this up, um, but I, I also got certified, uh, in fact, before I, I did my digital pulse wave analysis certification, and Dr. Harry is the, the authority in the country. He certifies all the digital pulse wave analyzing uh, uh, technicians out there. Um, we also got, my fiance and I also got certified in heart rate variability. And this digital pulse wave analyzer, and there's uh, a few other machines out there that will do this, not very many, but they also measure heart rate variability. And we're not going to go into that tonight because it, it was a whole seminar based on, on the heart. And so this is my contact information, and, uh, and we can come back to it if we need it. Um, I'm going to just uh, see if we can move from, yeah, from one slide to the next. There we go. I, I love Carl Sagan. I love uh, observing what's going on in, in the, uh, the heavens. And, you know, he, his quote somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. Well, hopefully... Uh, Dr. Harry has been able to give uh, the listeners some, some dynamite information that they didn't know. Um, I'm going to do some repeating, and we're going to focus a little bit more on uh, the solutions. I know Dr. Harry talked about the number one solution, arginine. We're going to just very quickly go through that. Uh, the heart is an incredible organ. Uh, this just happens to be a, a picture that I pulled off the web. Uh, this is my heart, uh, Leslie, my fiance. And, uh, and so I, I won't want to stay on that very long because I'll start crying. Uh, she's such a dear uh, individual. She's got a big heart for others. She was the one that actually led me to uh, becoming certified in heart rate variability. Um, and so we're going to touch on that very, very briefly this time. But as, as you heard from Dr. Harry, arginine is an essential, it's actually a non-essential amino acid, but it's very vital or growth repair, hormones, enzymes, antibodies, neurotransmitters. It's found in a number of different foods. We only typically get three to five grams a day. Vegetarians actually get less than that. And so this arginine-derived nitric oxide um, is decreased by poor diet, as Dr. Harry mentioned, lack of exercise, age. As we get older, our body produces less. Cholesterol, blood pressure, diabetes, smoking. We're, we're simply not getting enough. And I, and I learned a lot about this. Because, uh, you know, I think Dr. David and I both commented, uh, well, of course, yes, arginine is, is one of these essential, uh, one of these vital uh, amino acids. Um, our body can produce some of it, but not very much of it. And uh, so what else is it? Well, there's about 94,000, I think it's about 96,000 peer-reviewed medical uh, clinical studies on the beneficial effects of, of arginine. Uh, we're going to come back to that. Uh, 
but the human heart is, is an incredible uh, machine. It pumps about 100,000 times every day. We don't have to think about it. Uh, its sole purpose is to not only pump blood to the body, but new research is revealing, and I'm just going to repeat just two or three slides from uh, my previous uh, presentation. It's actually a four-way communication system. It's not only a pump. If, it, if we allowed it to, it could pump uh, uh, enough blood to produce the equivalent energy to ra raise a ton of weight three feet off the ground. That's 48 million gallons. Uh, that that will will uh, will happen in one lifetime at least three million times, and typically we think about the heart as this electrical signal. Well, it is, but it's also it has these electrical conduction systems, uh, the AV node and the sinoatrial node, atrial ventricular node. There's 40,000 neurons in the heart. There's a little brain that actually goes along with the heart, and uh, it was reclassified as an actually a, a hormonal gland. But we also know that the heart is actually a sensory organ as well. And again, we won't talk about that because that's in that other seminar that's called uh, Heart Math. But uh, it's, a, it's a bonding uh, organ, and it, it helps produce this oxytocin, which is the love or the bonding hormone that children and, and people actually uh, uh, will, will get from this. So back to arginine. We're, we're getting typically less than 5 grams a day, depending on... Uh, your your score. If you've been, uh, uh, and, and this is something that uh, if you're not knowingly close to somebody who uh, performs the digital pulse wave uh, analysis, uh, typically it can be done for somewhere in the fifty dollars and maybe less range. That's a huge uh, uh, bargain because of the cost that Dr. Harry said that this thing will, will oftentimes replace in terms of some of the medical tests. Uh, but if you know what your current health history is, what your personal history is. Uh, your lifestyle, your current health, obviously uh, you may need uh, 10 grams, you may need 15 grams. So, so uh, it's not going to hurt if you suspect that you're uh, at high risk uh, to go on um, more than this. But we, we know that uh, clinical trials, both in the U.S. and international, have repeatedly uh, been uh, given individuals 30 to 50 grams of arginine without any ill effects. Uh, typically the best is uh, liquid, as Dr. Harry mentioned and empty stomach is most effective because if you take arginine with other proteins, it can bind to other amino acids. Uh, of course, again, just what, what Dr. Harry and I said, this 85,000 medically published clinical studies is now out of date. It's 96,000. So it's, it's increasing more and more, uh, and, and you can't ignore it anymore. I mean, it's just uh, it's a fact that and Dr. Harry went over this very well of all these different aspects that arginine helps to improve. When you think about it, any time your body has the need for oxygen, and every tissue in the body has a need for it, if you're getting clogged arteries, if you're getting a decreased oxygen, oftentimes it's an indicator that you may need to increase your, your arginine levels. Uh, okay, so Dr. Ignaro, as, as you heard Dr. Harry say, uh, is the Nobel Prize, one of the three Nobel Prize winners about 11 years ago uh, in this uh, nitric oxide category. And arginine increases the body's ability to produce nitric oxide. This one cell thick layer that lines all of our arteries, the endothelium, produces nitric oxide if you have an adequate amount of arginine. So it'll literally clean out these arteries, it'll literally open up the arteries. Uh, Dr. Ignaro actually patented these three things. We need arginine, but we also need citrulline. Well, why citrulline? Well, because of these factors here. It promotes energy, stimulates the immune system. It helps get rid of this toxic ammonia which builds up in the system. It's closely related to L-arginine, and our body can convert it to L-arginine. So literally what it does is it turbocharges this nitric oxide, and it substantially increases nitric oxide production. Dr. Ignaro patented the fact that we need arginine, citrulline, and antioxidants. And we're going to get to antioxidants a little bit, but that's a... That's a patented intellectual idea that the Nobel Prize winner um, ha has put into effect. So let's get into vitamin D. What is it? Well, it's not a vitamin, interestingly enough. Um, I'm going to give you a website on the next slide that, uh, that you can get uh, a lot more information on this. It's actually a pro-hormone, and it targets over 2,000 genes. That's 10% of the total genome. The research shows that about 1,000 international units a day can lower a person's cancer risk by 50%. Well, 
but we believe that even more than that is totally safe and in some cases necessary. University of Colorado right here, Denver School of Medicine, and also Massachusetts General and Children's Hospital in Boston research uh, said that, that uh, this vitamin D will literally arm the immune system against simple disorders just like the common cold. Here's the uh, vitamin D council.org. Um, they, they considered a seco steroid, uh, and I'll, I'll define that if, if uh, somebody wants me to, but it's a very important hormone. In fact, it's the most important uh, seco steroid. Now, don't get thrown by that word. It's not a drug, and, and we know that steroid hormones can be very harmful. This is a naturally occurring substance that our skin actually produces. Sunlight converts, anybody know what? It's cholesterol to this pro-hormone, this vitamin D3. So if you're on a cholesterol-blocking drug, well, guess what you're decreasing? You're decreasing your body's immune system and your body's ability to produce vitamin D. So the research currently basically says that, that it can help with uh, the variety 17 now, I think, so far that uh, is on the uh, vitamin D council. 17 different types of cancers as well as heart disease, strokes, hypertension, autoimmune disorders, diabetes, depression, chronic pain, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis. That's the one that we most commonly think about, the sunshine vitamin. It helps produce that, uh, you know, convert cholesterol on our skin to vitamin D, and that helps to incorporate calcium within our bone structure. It also helps with muscle weakness, muscle wasting, birth defects. Now, isn't that interesting? How could it affect birth defects? Well, remember that last slide we talked about? Let's go back there. 2,000 genes. So that's an important thing that, that literally can, can change, and that's one of the reasons why I believe that it helps with at least 17. I think they're going to be finding a lot more. Uh, periodontal disease is one of the first places that a pregnant women will lose calcium is right around the uh, sockets of the teeth, so sometimes the teeth starts to, to loosen up. So how much D3? Well, research indicates that it, it's necessary to supplement with at least 5,000 international units. Used to be, uh, oh, they were worried about that. And I think a lot of multivitamins have like 400 international units, 400. Well, to obtain that amount from milk or from a multivitamin, you need to take 10 multivitamin tablets or drink 50 glasses of milk. Neither one of those is advisable. So the easiest way is just to get it into a, a very easily uh, assimilable liquid uh, form. Um, and we'd recommend that you uh, test. It's a very simple blood test that you can uh, do, and you can test yourself uh, periodically. I think uh, you know if, if everything's doing okay, if you're supplementing and you're staying within these normal ranges uh, between 50 and 80 nanograms per milliliter. The laboratory usually have a normal range, uh, but you you better also check with somebody that knows what they're talking about when it comes to vitamin D, because that's an area that's changing very rapidly. But go to that. Uh, vitamindcouncil.org. Uh, that'll give you a wealth of information on that. All right, so let's move on to uh, some very important nutrients. These are called essential fatty acids. These omega-3s. We get way too many sixes in our diet uh, and, and, and nines, but, uh, but uh, omega-3s are very important. In fact, uh, they estimate right now that uh, the U.S. Uh, there's about 80% of the population is deficient in essential fatty acids. Over 2,000 scientific studies reveal that this problem is associated with this deficiency of these essential fatty acids with heart disease, cancer, diabetes. Uh, the symptoms uh, of omega fatty acid deficiency can be learning, uh, memory issues like uh, ADD, ADHD, irritability, in some cases violent behavior, depression, food cravings, dyslexia dry skin, eczema, cracked skin on the heel, dandruff, and several others. I didn't want to list them all because we take about four other slides. Uh, we know that there is very extensive and strong evidence that shows that these nutrients are highly effective at preventing heart disease and strokes, arrhythmias, which is heart irregularities, cancer, both breasts, uh, or all the, these above, breast, ovarian, colon, prostate, and pancreatic, uh, diabetes, inflammatory diseases, now, we all have been trained that, oh, you get them from fish. Well, I read uh, one of the local papers just about 12 miles from us in Loveland, Colorado, and, and they're telling the children there and the adults who don't eat the fish here. It's got too much mercury. So they're, they're re actually recommending 
that uh, we stay away from fish. Um, we can get them in uh, other non-toxic and, and actually these uh, molecularly distilled formulas. Uh, but we know that the research shows that uh, perilla oil, uh, about a thousand uh, thousand milligrams a day, is uh, is good. It actually has more essential fatty acids than uh, fish oils. So let's look at some of these other cofactors that help the heart, help the cardiovascular disease. Uh, CoQ10, it's, uh, it's gaining in popularity. It's really out there. Uh, and, and most of you that are on this, you have to have internet or you wouldn't be listening to this or seeing the PowerPoint presentation. So uh, when you look at the uh, research out there, it's, it's pretty compelling. CoQ10 affects the cellular level of energy. It actually affects the mitochondria. Uh, it's most abundant in the heart. Uh, generally speaking, the worse the heart condition, the more the need for CoQ10. Uh, a lot of research has shown that it's effective in treating uh, periodontal disease. Uh, there's a lot of evidence now, and there's ongoing research uh, at some major institutions in uh, the ability of CoQ10 to impact cancer, diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's, uh, Huntington's, Korea, Alzheimer's disease and immune system disorders like uh, AIDS. Every cell in the body needs CoQ10. It helps revitalize, it enhances the heart uh, and the cells within the heart. Like we said, it's the most abundant in, in anywhere or everywhere, nowhere else but the heart. The immune system, uh, it helps with enhancing and the immune system function and also uh, just generally cellular function. It generates 95% of the energy that we need to the body with this production of this uh, ATP which is a basic energy molecule of the cell. How much of this do we need? About 100 milligrams, at least 100 milligrams of CoQ10. All right, here's, here's the big one right here. This is what a lot of people have been hearing about. Uh, you've seen it on 60 Minutes. If you haven't, just go to uh, YouTube or go to Google and type in resveratrol 60 Minutes, and, and you'll probably be able to see the, the featured article uh, January 25th of this year. Uh, Oprah had Dr. Oz. Emmett Oz uh, uh, endorsed taking resveratrol. He warned people, like we're going to warn people as well, uh, that you need to be just be very discriminatory about where you're going to get it. Everybody, just like a lot of things, when you come out with something like the arginine, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh yeah, well we have this these pills that are really inexpensive. Well, yeah, like Dr. Harry said, if you want to take 55 or 60 pills and you're not going to absorb very much, then you know you might come close to one ounce. But the best way on the arginine formula is to get it in a liquid formula. Um, uh, uh, Sertris Pharmaceuticals, which is, uh, they're, they're also associated with uh, GlaxoSmithKline. These are giants in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, they're putting billions of dollars into this uh, uh, phase one trial. They've already completed phase one trials. They're actually heading into phase two trials. So in the phase one preclinical trials, uh, resveratrol showed that it decreased blood glucose. We're going to talk about what it is and where it comes from in just a minute. Decreased blood glucose, increased insulin sensitivity. That's huge. They, they believe it's because of increased mitochondrial function. It's an antioxidant. It's actually found in, in uh, grape skins and grape seeds and in the root, uh, typically red, red uh, uh, grape. Grapes, so it helps to slow or prevent cellular degeneration. Um, if you if you if you don't know what an antioxidant is, you've probably been in a cave or under a rock for the last few years because they're they're all over the news. Uh, there's a number of antioxidants out there. This is thought to be one of the most potent. The National Institute of Aging, in a 2006 study, showed that it increased the lifespan of experimental laboratory rats by 33 uh, percent. They they actually was a Harvard in a combined study with the National Institute of Aging, and they found that resveratrol is thought to increase the fat blasting and also anti-aging gene, SIRT1, SIRT1. It's known as the French paradox. And the reason why is because the French typically have, you know, they're a culture that ha typically enjoy high fat diet, very tasty, but high fat. And, and in, in our country, we don't seem to be able to get away with it like, the French do, but because they drink red wine, often a, a pretty large portion of the population drink wine with their meals. Uh, it's thought to result in, and it does result in very low heart disease with it, even though they have a very high fat diet. Americans don't get away with that. 
Uh, we don't drink as much red wine, but we're starting to learn about supplements. Uh, I don't like red wine myself. It, it, it sometimes will give me a headache and just don't like it. Uh, I would prefer her to take, a, take it in a, in a liquid, a decent tasting liquid, that doesn't have the alcohol in it. Because I personally don't want to be drinking 115 glasses a day. That's how much 100 milligrams of resveratrol. If you get now, this is where you got to be careful. We're going to warn you uh, uh, about uh, the selection of resveratrol because of the fact that it's out there all over the news. People are jumping on the bandwagon. Yes, let's try and you know give give our, ours is cheaper, ours is less expensive, and and what they're they're containing maybe 20 percent resveratrol. So just be aware of of the source that you're you're going to uh, get it from. Getting back to this uh, French paradox, um, it, it actually mimics calorie restriction, and uh, we, we won't go into that uh, on this webinar today, but if you look up calorie restriction and longevity, every researcher, there, there is no disagreement that by reducing calories 20 to 30 percent or more, um, it'll, it'll increase the lifespan of laboratory rats and humans. And so we know that we just have way too many calories in this country. But what's interesting is because it stimulates this uh, uh, the uh, anti-aging gene, this it, it improves the fat blasting uh, uh, substance in, in these genes. It's thought to have the same effect as calorie restriction. Now, I would recommend most of us in the United States do both: <laughs> get the resveratrol and reduce your calories, because most of us are getting way too many calories, and we're not moving very much. I'll talk about that in, in a little bit. So 100 milligrams a day, uh, there's some combination uh, nutrients out there, combination liquid, uh, arginine combination, antioxidant, vitamin D, and things like this that, that you can get these uh, in them. Dr. Harry has done a great job of being out there researching uh, some of the top companies and products. We're not going to talk about companies or products because we don't want to do that on a call like this, but uh, there's some dynamite uh, uh, companies out there. I just thought I'd throw that in because it's nice. Uh, it, it gives us a little bit of a break here. So my, my, my fiance says, I don't spend enough time taking a breath, relax. I know Dr. Harry, uh, I, I love him. Uh, I love the information he gives. But don't you, don't you guys agree that it's like taking a drink from a fire hose? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, uh, yeah, Ruth Ann said, you said that. No, I didn't say that. Don't, don't blame it on me. <laughs> oh, well, he, no, she said me too. Okay, I, I take the blame for that, yes. I can talk very rapidly too. So, but anyway, sometimes it's nice to breathe, slow down. Uh, but no, thank you so much, Dr. Harry, for being such a, a, a resource, a fountain of, of uh, information that we can drink from. So, okay, so we're at the end. And we're going to answer some questions here, but what, it, what next? Now that, now that we've like, teased you and give you this good information, what do we do next? Well, I would suggest that you get a DPA test. If you don't know anybody in your area uh, that, does, that has a digital pulse wave analyzer, um, email Dr. Harry. Is it okay if I give your email out, Dr. Harry? Or maybe, he, maybe he's got it on mute, but uh, I think yeah, he'd probably you can. rather. You can. Okay, I, I think he'd probably rather have an email than a phone call. Uh, it's D-R-H-A-R-Y at Comcast.net. Dr. Harry at Comcast.net. So email him, tell him exactly where you are, give him the zip code and everything, tell him where you are, and he'll look on his list of approved, authorized, uh, certified uh, technicians, uh, that, and hopefully we'll find somebody close by. And if not, there's other ways that we can uh, get, get a, a guest. For, for one thing, we all know in this country, we're not producing enough nitric oxide, so typically you Dr. Harry and I probably would recommend that most people get on at least five grams a day, and then depending on, you know, what other things you can do a blood test. Every every town uh, has has the ability to get in and, and get a blood test. You can either go by your doctor's orders, or you can go to an independent lab. Make sure they include a lipid panel with that. So these are just common sense things. And when you think about the top three or four things that we need for sustaining life. You gotta have oxygen. Number one, you can only survive a few minutes without oxygen. So, exercise. We need to move more. We're not moving enough. So, that you know, we don't need to go into more detail than that. We just know it. We need to walk more. Uh, that'll save a lot of life by exercising. You're actually improving your body's ability to produce nitric oxide. The challenge there is you've got to exercise like 23 hours a day, 
<laughs> to, to maintain the uh, the you know the arteries opening up and producing enough nitric oxide, and most people can't do that. Uh, we need to drink more water. That's the number two thing for survival. You can only live for a few days without water, a few minutes without oxygen, a few days without water. You can live for weeks without food, and, and uh, I'm not going to say it. Uh, <laughs> in this country, we know that getting the proper ratio, the protein, carbohydrates, and fats is, is very important. Uh, there's a lot of people on this call who know what genetic key is. I think it's important to understand uh, what your family history, what your, maybe it's blood type, but maybe it's, it's your genetic history. Uh, but we, need to, we know we need to do these things and, and, and eat in a proper ratio, not get too many of the saturated fats, etc. But, uh, you know, you take the es Alaskan Eskimos and the Eastern Indians, uh, even if they're normal weight uh, individuals, normal uh, uh, body mass index, and you switch them in their diets, you'll kill them because those groups for thousands of years are not used to eating that ratio in some cases of high protein in other cases of high carbohydrate like the Eastern Indians. So we know that we can't get everything in our food. We can't get everything in our diet with all the things that's going on in, in uh, food preparation and processing. We need to supplement. We need to supplement in a smart way, not just taking more. More is not necessarily better. I, I counsel people all the time. I'm sure Dr. Harry does as well. They're taking tons of stuff. Well, unfortunately, they have a bad BPA test. Their arteries aren't doing so good. Well, apparently, what they're on isn't doing very much good for opening up their arteries. So I say to them, hey, let's set that aside, try some new things, and then let's do some retesting. Let's be objective about this. This is the last one. Let's follow up with a health coach or your doctor to know that you're making progress. That's why I love the DPA testing. It's scientific. It's FDA cleared. It's, it's a very simple three-minute test. It takes maybe 10, 8, 10 minutes or less to uh, go through the results of that. And then you know, and, and Ruth Ann and I have seen many people that they thought they were doing good. They were taking three, four, five hundred dollars of supplements a month. And they were exercising, doing all the right things, but they tested out bad on the uh, digital pulse wave analyzer. And so um, Dr. Harry has said it many times, never underestimate the ability of a DPA test to save a life. So I, I send out messages on a regular basis to get the objective test done, find out what's happening with your arteries, how hard, how stiff, or how flexible are your arteries. You don't know until you get the test done. Same thing with blood work. You know, what does high cholesterol feel like? What does hardening of the arteries feel like? It doesn't feel like anything. And we all know that 50% of men and 60% of women, their first symptom of heart disease is death. They don't make it to the hospital. And so it's so important. It's, it's just critical to, to be able to get that objective test. So here's some of my contact information. And, uh, and I know Dr. Harry has his uh, posted. David has posted his on the uh, board. And so we've been uh, just loving the results of the cardiovascular screening and seen lots of people that uh, they were heading in a bad direction. We've been able to turn around within two or three months. You can objectively test them. They're not only feeling better, but they, they know they're doing better. They, they know because their symptoms have gone, but they're also helping to get their arteries cleaned out. And that's literally what arginine does. It's, I think Dr. Harry said it, it's like Thrano in a bottle. It's like a rotor rooter to your arteries. It literally helps clean that out. And, and you don't see too many low-cost substances uh, like this that are non-toxic that will do as much as this will do, particularly when you get it in a, in a combination liquid formula. I think I'm done. And so, um, Dr. David, do you have any comments or do you have any questions that, uh, that uh, are coming up? Oh, absolutely. And thank you, Doctor, so, so much for this wonderful information. I'm go going to transfer it back to uh, me if I can get this thing fixed. <laughs> Uh, boy, I'm gonna, I want to <laughs> see. This is one of the reasons why we need Sherry here. And don't tell her, <laughs> don't tell her I said this, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, folks, uh, while I'm trying to get this thing all fixed up, remember you can type in your questions in the chat box to your right. And obviously, there are, there have been a lot of questions come in already uh, about. Um, okay. Uh, okay, I found it. Uh, Dr. Harry, do you have that slide ready, the parts, uh, options A and B? Um, no, I would have to open up that okay. thing. If you would do that, that would be great. I'll, try, I'll switch it to you right now. 
Um, of course, a lot of people are asking questions about where the DPA testing machine can be found. Where can they go to? So obviously, uh, you can contact Dr. Ha Dr. Harry, and I've typed in his address, his contact into the chat box. Uh, Australia may be a challenge. Lots of a few questions about Australia over there, and I guess that's another challenge. Dr. Harry, what do you have to say about that? Um, yeah, I don't. I don't believe there is a. Uh... DPA device in Australia right now. Okay. All right. Uh, while you're switching, I've, I've given you back control, so we'll, we'll just look up. We'll look at that. Uh, the option A and B. I just wanted to say something about what Dr. Harry said about if you wait, if you don't do anything and you wait to have a heart attack, God forbid. But if that happens. Just remember, and there's been research done. I've, I've always been interested in how the mind affects the body, and the body affects the mind. But there's overwhelming evidence, overwhelming evidence that uh, with a heart attack, with a heart attack, you get um, uh, more, over 50%, if not more, people with heart attacks actually suffer major depression, and even that depression can be can be sustained, and which predisposes them further to another heart, heart attack and to osteoporosis. So you don't want to just leave things to happen. You want to take charge and take control. And uh, I'm, I'm glad we have such a, uh, a nutritional technology like this that can help you do just that. Dr. Harry, are you ready? Did, did, were yes. You, did, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, did you accept control? Uh, I never got the... Oh. I, uh, I, don't, I don't think I got the... Uh... Okay. Uh, let me... Maybe because your um if you would right, click now I, did you get it okay now i got it oh wait a minute sherry platt was made presenter you are no longer presenter okay i i took it back i'm, I'm, I'm going to do that again okay sorry about this folks folks go ahead and type in your questions uh dr harry i'm passing it to you now okay great All right. While he's doing that, someone asked, "How soon after taking arginine on an empty stomach can you eat?" Well, you can eat anything that's uh, carbohydrate or fat. What you want to avoid for at least one hour is protein. Oh, really? And why is that? Because protein contains amino acids, and any other amino acids block the absorption of the arginine that you just took in. Hmm. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. And most of the food we eat anyway contains protein, so it's just better just to keep away from it for like an hour, did you say? Right. Okay. But if some people get like a upset stomach or uh, what they could do is eat some crackers or, you know, a bagel or something like that. Okay. Uh, my mother has leg pain when walking on a treadmill. How much arginine should she take? And do you have any idea of how long before she should see a difference? Um... It would be five grams twice a day, first thing in the morning and last thing at night before bed, and she should see a difference within 48 hours. Within 48 hours? Wow. Mm -hmm. That soon, huh? Yeah, there's been studies um, showing that uh, people with peripheral arterial disease, which that is a sign of, that um, you know, somewhere between 48 hours and two weeks, um, they, they can walk normally with no pain. That's impressive. Now this is okay. All right. Now, now this this is with specific, a specific brand that you're talking about, right? Because like Dr. Steve was talking about, the, you can have you can go to the health food store and get all kinds of stuff, but you're not sure about how the best quality. Yeah, you you want to get it. Uh, try to get it in a liquid form, um, or if you can find a powder that dissolves really good. Some powders don't dissolve, and you throw most of it down the drain, because a, a powder will eventually become a liquid. So, but liquid is 90% absorption versus taking 500 to 1,000 milligram pills. Now, don't go online and order, you know, a 55-gallon drum of arginine powder because, first of all, arginine is very, very bitter, and you wouldn't be able to mix it with anything to to even take because you, it's so bitter. Um, and the other thing is it has to have the right cofactors, which would be citrulline and 
um, the uh, antioxidants, which are vitamin C, vitamin E, the OPC, selenium, different things like that. And tell us again, what's uh, what's part does selenium play in heart in, in the heart health? Well, there's been multiple studies showing that here in America, and in fact, even in England and elsewhere, that um, our soils are depleted of selenium, and it seems to go hand in hand with the uh, uh, lack of selenium goes hand in hand with uh, cancer and, and heart disease. So, uh, selenium is an antioxidant but um, it, it, it actually is proven in many studies to actually help uh, prevent heart disease and cancer. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an essential nutrient that we need and we just don't get in our food supply anymore. Great. It, will the arginine be effective for skipped heartbeats? Absolutely. A um, couple things that would help with that would be for one of them is arginine because nitric oxide does help to establish a normal heart rhythm, but also the uh, omega-3 that Steve was talking about also helps establish a normal heart rhythm. CoQ10, um, you know, that, you know, is important for every cell of the body. It's the, the fuel for the cell. It's the furnace. It's the fuel for the furnace, and um, so that helps establish normal heart rhythm. So there's a number of things that will help. Even vitamin D3 is, is shown to help, uh, you know, with with arrhythmias. Great. Uh, someone asks if uh, if uh, arginine is, is, is available in other countries like India. I really, I really don't don't know. I, I don't know what's available in India. I'm sure, well, it's an amino acid, so, you know, I'm just completely unfamiliar with, uh, with India and, um, you know what's available there. I know that it's available in other countries throughout the European Union um, and South America. Okay, uh, folks, those of you who are asking, um, lots of people, people are wanting wanting to know where where to buy the the liquid arginine from. Now, Dr. Steve has offered to help answer your questions where that is concerned. But I'm going to say this: if someone else invited you to be on this call, someone else who who uh, who is a distributor with liquid arginine, please, please, please get back with the person who brought you, or who asked who invited you to the webinar. Uh, we will only, only cater to the people who have nowhere, who nowhere else to go, who, who don't know where to buy it at all. And so Dr. Steve will be glad to, to help you, to, um, help answer your questions where that is concerned. If you need his information, we can send that to you as well. All right, CoQ10. Is CoQ10 best used, the used by the body as ubiquinol? I know there's a ubiquinol and ubiquinone. That's it is ubiqu ubiquinol. Yeah. Is the is the part that the body uses. So ubiquinone is converted to ubiquinol, but only a part of it is. So if you can, if you can, uh, I supplement with 200 milligrams of ubiquinol every day. And um, that is equivalent. It's eight times the strength of ubiquinone or CoQ10. So mm -hmm. yeah, ubiquinol is the the way to go. Now you can't put ubiquinol in a powder or in a liquid. So that's why um, you know a lot of the products that I have formulated, I've tried to put ubiquinol in the, in that product, but it can't be done. So we use ubiquinone, which is you know 100 mil. If you can find 100 milligrams or better of ubiquinone. Then, um, the, you know, that's going to do a lot for you. Uh, the average American can benefit from that. If you have any type of heart issue, you would need at least a minimum of 300 milligrams of uh, CoQ10 or ubiquinone. So uh, what percentage of ubiquin, uh, ubiquinol can be gotten from ubiquinone and taken in? Well, figure if ubiquinol is eight times the strength of ubiquinone, so um, one eighth of what's in uh, ubiquinone is converted to ubiquinol. Got it. Got it. Okay, great. Can this be taken if you have a pacemaker? Yeah, absolutely. Pace, pacemaker helps to establish a normal heart rhythm. Um, we all have a, um, you know, a, a a normal pacemaker in our heart, which obviously is gone dysfunctional. So then they put in a mechanical pacemaker, and um, you know, by, by staying on an arginine product, that helps to keep that 
pacemaker in perfect um, alignment. And um, so, yeah, it, a person with a pacemaker or even, a, you know, a, um, a, a, I forget what they call it, an ICU or whatever, where uh, people that have um, ha need a shock every once in a while, um, a fibrillator implanted in the heart, it's safe to take with that too. Mm. They should never it. need that uh, fibrillator. I love it when modern medicine and nutrition work together hand in hand. That's just great. All right. Can alginine reduce the size of an enlarged heart? Absolutely. Um, I just got a, uh, a testimony from uh, a gentleman the other day that uh, had congestive heart failure and enlarged heart, and um, his legs were swollen because of uh, when you have an enlarged heart, you retain fluids and and um, his doctor told him to go home and make out his will, and he went on arginine and immediately saw a difference, and it drained the fluid from his body, and um, actually, uh, over the course of time, will sh shrink the size of the heart, normalize the size of the heart. Hmm. Okay, great. That's good news. I would like the information about where to buy. Okay, uh, I'll send you... Uh, okay, someone needs information, so I'll send him Steve's contact. Will these slides be available for print? I think Steve's will be, but I don't. Uh, but Dr. Harry's is uh, pro proprietary. There are lots of um, um, uh, copyrighted stuff on his slides, so we'll probably not, right, Dr. Harry? Correct. Okay. There you go. So there you have your answer, folks. So we can we can get Steve's for you. Is arginine the same type of thing as chelation therapy? Oh no. I don't think so. No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Collation therapy is, is, is pretty expensive and you've got to go through like 16 treatments and collation therapy will remove uh, calcium from the body. And calcium is just one small contributor to, uh, you know, calcification within the arteries and, and valves. Um, so it does have the ability to remove heavy metals. It does have the ability to, um, to remove uh, calcium. Um, but as far as inflammation, as, which is from C-reactive protein, as far as homocysteine, um, you know, some of these other uh, problems as well as blood clotting, um, arginine does everything everywhere in the body. Whereas the, I, you know, and I'm not saying that orchalation is, is not good. I think it is good, but I, I would first start with arginine and then if you weren't, you know, um, reaching your goals, then maybe try or oral chelation, which, like I said, is very expensive and it's very time-consuming. Got it. Uh, speaking about calcium, I've heard people talk about good calcium versus bad calcium, and that's kind of confusing to me because um, I understand calcium is one of the greatest deficiencies in the, in the, among people today. So what, what, what some people have too much bad calcium, um, do, do you know, can you explain that? Well, the interesting thing about calcium is calcium is necessary in the body outside of sodium. It's the most prevalent uh, mineral in the body. Um, both sodium and calcium neutralize acids, so everything that we Americans eat uh, and drink generally creates acid in our body, and the only place that should be acidic is our stomach. Unfortunately, everywhere else in our joints, in our, in our blood, in everything else becomes acidic, which leads to all kinds of problems, and calcium and sodium are the two things that will neutralize that acid and balance your pH. Now, when people do not get enough calcium, what, and, and certainly not enough sodium, because we're all told, told not to eat sodium, um, then what happens is the, the, the body only knows how to survive, and it will go to your bones and pull that calcium out of the bones to neutralize that acid. And in so doing, that's the type of calcium that actually can cause calcium deposits and calcification and so on. Not, the calcium that you supplement with, because if you're supplementing with calcium, then the, the body is not going to the bones and pulling it out of the bones. So uh, calcium is very important um, as far as lowering blood pressure, helping you sleep, uh, preventing heart disease, establishing heart rhythm. Um, it is very, and that goes hand in hand with magnesium, which is also very, very important in the body. So. Um, I, I know personally I take uh, 1,200 milligrams of calcium every day along with uh, 600 milligrams of magnesium. Great. 
Um, someone says, my mom took two ounces at first. The pain, I think it's the same person who was asking about the pain from walking and all that. And she said, her mom took two ounces at first. The pain went away. Is that an indication to go back to just one ounce daily? She's taking only one ounce now. Chances are that mother, um, is, first of all, is a diabetic. And uh, chances are she's on other med medication. My recommendation would to be to stay on two ounces a day. Um, she's probably up in her years, so mm -hmm. she certainly can benefit from two ounces a day. And I, I would stay permanently on the two ounces a day. Now, eventually, the goal is to slowly, uh, you know, get off all the medication, uh, which can, if you don't, will eventually lead to liver or kidney failure. So, um, and that takes time. You know, you got to work with your doctor and and have him read the lab reports and slowly pull you off it, including, uh, your di you know, if, even if they're on you know, diabetic medicine, eventually they can get off it because it does help with that uh, insensitivity of the insulin. So my, my advice would be to stay on, on uh, an ounce twice a day or uh, five grams twice a day of arginine. I mean, I take, I take 10 and I'm in perfect health. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? I take yeah. 10 grams every day. Now, and you have a, a cardiovascular system of a 29-year-old. Correct. Oh, that's amazing. Now, was was that Kevin Trudeau that was on your one of your slides? Yes, it was. He was. I was doing a trade show in Chicago, and um, he came and visited my booth and was just totally blown away by everything. And the next day, he sent. He was so you know so impressed that the next day he sent his wife down to to be tested, <laughs> which I thought was funny. And she said, "Oh yeah, he he told me I had to come here and get tested." And she actually came out. He came out better than she did, and uh, she was younger. So obviously he practices what he preaches. Hmm. That's good. That's very good. All right. How long does one stay on arginine? Forever, I guess. You would want to stay on arginine forever. You want to create nitric oxide in your body forever. Got it. I mean, as long as you stay on it forever, you should never have a heart attack or stroke. Wow, that's, that's saying a lot from a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, it's that, this is that good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. You heard it, folks. You heard the doctor speak. Okay. What if you take meds for atrial fibrillation like atenolol? Uh, she did not finish her question, but I guess she's concerned about the interaction or something. There is no contraindications with any drug outside of nitroglycerin. So you can take, um, you can take anything and, and basically you know, uh, the goal is to eventually, um, you know, have the doctor wean you off some of those. You know, unfortunately, you know, uh, you know, prescription medicine might be good for short term, but it's not good long term. And usually when a doctor puts you on something, he says you're going to be on this the rest of your life. And that's not what you want to hear. Great. Okay. Uh, what if you, t okay, she finished the question. Okay, yeah, so you, the question has been answered. Uh, Dr. Harry, can I, uh, what? Yes. Can I just insert one? Uh, uh, Dr. Harry, I know that you know this, and I just wanted to clarify that, um, yes, nitroglycerin and arginine don't go together, but neither do the sexual enhancing drugs like the Viagra and, right, the other ones. Yeah, anything that is a, uh, anything that produces nitric oxide, which those also, well, they actually don't produce nitric oxide, but they amplify the, effect of nitric oxide. So. so it would be a good idea if a person was on like Cialis or um, some of the other uh, enhancing, sexually enhancing drugs yeah. to also be on this either. Yeah, I would, okay. it would, it, it might, uh, <laughs> you know, like the commercial says, if you have a direction longer than four hours, see your doctor. <laughs> That's right. Aug augmentation, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Harry, what are your thoughts on taking a stress test due to symptoms of heart problem? Well, that has never made sense to me as it may be the cause of a heart attack. Oh, another question. Also, years ago, I got a very bad headache when taking Q CoQ10 more than once. Any thoughts on that? So there are about two questions here. Well, the CoQ10 could have been a detox. I mean, that's, you know, sometimes in your body things that worse before it gets better. That's called a... Herxheimer effect or healing uh, effect. Um, so I would have stuck with it and given it time, uh, maybe lessen the dose and work your way up. 
Um, as far as the uh, other question concerning the, the heart and stress, uh, the DPA actually does, and Steve was el alluding to, something called heart rate variability. And heart rate variability is your heart's ability to actually uh, react to uh, stressful situations, whether it's internal or external. You know, somebody cuts you off in the car, or uh, you get the pink slip in the mail, or your girlfriend breaks up with you, or you know, something like that, which is external, but a lot of it is unconscious thought, too. Things are happening unconsciously that affect our heart, because it's the communication between the brain, the spine, and the heart and your sympathetic, and your, which is your adrenaline rush, and your parasympathetic, which is the part of the nervous system that relaxes you. But how well can your heart affect, you know, or affect some sort of stress? And that's a leading cause of, um, of heart attack, okay? It's broken heart syndrome. So um, it's very important to be tested in that. Um, you know, some of the things that can help balance that. One of them is arginine, because when you are are depressed or you are anxious or whatever, uh, something called C-reactive protein is released that is an inflammatory, so that causes your arteries to constrict, which leads to chest pain. You're not having a heart attack, it just feels like you're having a heart attack, and um, but it's an, actually a panic attack or an anxiety attack. So um, a, another thing is uh, L, uh, tryptophan or L5-HTP, uh, hydroxytryptophan which also helps to uh, relax you, helps to, you know, if you're very anxious and you're very tense, it help to, to, you know, create more serotonin, which is your happy hormone. Uh, Steve does an excellent talk on heart math, which is a, a, a handheld uh, monitor that's to your computer that teaches you breathing exercises and mind control that helps to release stress. So there, it, you take a different approach than the cardiovascular uh, of supplementation with arginine. Great. Steve, any, any thoughts on that? Okay. okay. Can you hear me? I had to plug my microphone in. Sorry. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, comments on the uh, heart math or on the uh, this particular project, there's actually a, a big one going on. It's called the Global Coherence Project, but it, they're, they're actually enabling uh, us to not only read the uh, the uh, electromagnetic impulse that the heart puts out. The heart puts out 6,000 times more electromagnetic impulse than the brain, and it's actually the heart that sets the tone for the brain. We used to think that the brain set the tone for the heart, but we know that's not true now. And, uh, and so th this is a huge project, the Institute of Heart Math. If, you, if a person wants to go to the website, they would go to www.heartmath, M-A-T-H is one word, heartmath.org. And they can look at the Global Coherence Project. But coherence is what Dr. Harry was talking about as we help a person get into a more calm state. It's not just relaxation. Uh, some people need to have... Uh, alertness. If they're on, uh, you know, uh, on on call, or if they're, uh, you know, a police officer, let's say, or in the military, there's a military like a returning warriors uh, program. Dr. Harry can talk a little bit more about this, but there's a huge amount of depression that's going on with these returning soldiers, and uh, to the point where, uh, Dr. Harry, you might, if you, you know, jump in, uh, I don't know how many soldiers are committing suicide because of depression. And, uh, and so the heart math and, and the certain parts of the military have started to understand how the heart and the brain interaction can help to, to reverse this process. But uh, he, Dr. Harry's right that we need these nutrients as well as a good properly functioning uh, heart and brain communication system because part of it is physical, part of it's actually uh, getting the substance in our body. You, know, you can't just live on air and water. You've got to have real food. You've got to have food supplements. Uh, but that can help with depression. It, it can help with that whole, whole process of what the body goes through when it goes through these post-traumatic stress disorder uh, syndromes. So it's very important. Uh, and, and for people who can get to a digital pulse wave analyzer, uh, I love the graphics that can be produced both for the uh, heart and, and the uh, elasticity of the arteries, and 
and all the different factors that this test that literally takes only about three minutes to, to do. Um, and then there's some interpretation involved, and depending on the questions and all that, may take a little bit longer than that. But um, but that also produces a uh, heart rate variability, uh, or, or a, in other words, a picture. Of, it produces a graph about heart rate variability, or a picture of how stress is impacting that person's nervous system. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's a it's a very important thing. And boy, what what two things to put together? What two great things to put together? The actual test on on your grading or your age of your arteries and, and how stiff uh, they they may be or or flexible. You, you want to know that number, uh, and then also how is stress impacting your life? We all have it. Uh, some people don't handle it very well, and so the the uh, Institute of Heart Math uh, has come up with some very simple ways of, of connecting to the heart. You know, breathing, getting getting in touch with. Uh, the emotional centers and, and really making that change uh, in an instant, like like flipping a switch. Once you learn it, it takes just a few minutes to learn it, and uh, and that can be done on the phone. My fiance and I, uh, we were introduced to this. We actually went out, got certified, got licensed to to uh, to be able to do uh, heart rate variability. And Dr. Harry can also license it and be able to certify individuals in heart rate variability as well through the digital pulse wave analysis. Just like the digital, just like the heart, and getting the EPA certification, they can also get the heart rate variability certification with Dr. Harry. But, but we wanted to focus on this in terms of stress reduction, and so that's why we went to the institute that's been doing it probably longer than anybody else, the Institute of Heart Math, and, uh, and got licensed as a one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one practitioner with these uh, these devices, these these uh, heart math, or they call it hemp wave devices, the handheld, or there's a PC as well. Great. Great stuff. Well, there's a lot we need to learn about. Huh. All right, someone asks, if, if someone is sensitive taking supplements, would a small dose of arginine daily be of any value? Uh, then the other question is, what are, you, what are your feelings of deep breathing through the nose and exhaling through the mouth? Would that be another added benefit? Thanks. I'll answer the, the question. On, um, it, according to Dr. Lignar, who won the Nobel Prize and wrote the book No More Heart Disease, he, he says anything less than four to five grams of arginine a day is a complete waste of time and money. Wow. So the answer is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 milligrams. Um, no, it's not going to do you any good. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and and we see, unfortunately, uh, way too many people that are they're they're taking it. They get it from a health food source or or another source, and they're taking it maybe a pill form, and and they think that they're protected, and it's a it's a misleading thing, and it's kind of like the resveratrol. You know, if if a person just grabs one off the shelf and just starts taking it. Uh, the chances are it's probably only 20% resveratrol, and you need to know your source. You need to know that, that the quality and the, and the percentage. And uh, that's what I love about uh, Dr. Harry, that he just he goes out there, he researches, uh, makes sure that, that we all have access to the same information, and, and we get the best source uh, for these nutrients out there. So I know I'm getting 100% resveratrol. Some of these are quite expensive, CoQ10, for example, and, and, uh, and they can be... A, got it in a, in a combination formula. It's just an unbelievable uh, price there. But um, yeah, that, we see people taking way too few, way too little. And uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, uh, people think that they're doing good. And then when they get the test done, they unfortunately find out the, the hard evidence. And so oftentimes, we've, and I can't tell you how many times we've been able to convert them over to a liquid, a highly absorbable form. And within two, three months, no, their symptoms improve. That's important, but most important is objectively how is their artery? How are their arteries functioning? Are they are they reversing that aging process? We all know that through the literature and and through some of the top researchers in, in the world that you can reverse heart disease. You can prevent and reverse heart disease and strokes. And, and but it's just getting the right information to the right people at the right time. And most doctors would still disagree with you on that. Unfortunately, you're right. You're right. Unfortunately, you're, and I tell people right away, if they have a cardiologist, I say, hey, run this by your cardiologist, but I'll almost guarantee you he'll either 
say uh, that's Boulder Cash or I don't know anything about that because he's been getting information from the pharmaceutical companies. Medical and pharmaceuticals can't make a dime on natural, naturally occurring uh, arginine. And so why would they educate the public on something they can't make any money on? Right. They right. Does arginine help with varicose veins? Yes. How so? Yeah, it's a cardiovascular issue, and uh, it certainly does. Hmm. Varicose veins, um, hemorrhoids, that's also a uh, macular degeneration. Any type of um, vessel problem, it strengthens the endothelium, which is the, the you know, that inner wall, and uh, even aneurysms uh, can be prevented, and in, 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 in most cases, uh, shrunk if you have one. So yeah, it, it any type of uh, blood vessel circulation problem, um, arginine will help to eradicate it. Okay. So, uh, I didn't answer this question before, but she still asked this afterwards, which maybe she was late coming in. Uh, will arginine help uh, a heart which is in atrial fibrillation come back into rhythm? Arginine, once converted to nitric oxide, helps establish normal heart rhythm. So, yes. Okay. Great. Uh, would it be okay to take arginine if you have an LVAD? I'm not sure what that refers to. Left ventricular atrial... Does that sound familiar to you, Dr. Harry? No. Yeah. LVAD. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, you might want to, to clarify that, folks. What is perilla oil? Perilla oil is actually a Japanese plant. So it's a vegetable-based um, omega-3, DHA, EPA. Okay. And that's plant-based. Okay, great. Uh, someone else asks, this, uh, along the same lines, what is a good source of omega-3s and omega-6s? Krill oil or other stuff, what's the best and why? What's the difference? Does it help the arginine? Does it help plaque? Well, the, 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 the good thing about krill is um, krill is a very tiny fish. So the belief is the smaller the fish, the less mercury uh, toxicity because one fish eats the next fish. So as you go up the food chain, the more mercury is content will be in the fish. So that's why uh, krill oil is actually a good source of omega-3. Uh, perilla oil is an excellent source of perilla. Uh, flaxseed oil is a good source, um, but um, I would put the the best is perilla oil and then krill oil and then flaxseed. In that order? Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, folks, we're rounding up soon. We don't want to keep our guests on, on interminably, so... Uh, boy, this is a question still coming in. All right, uh, I'm just going to take two more, and sorry, folks, the rest, if you, can, if you email us, maybe we can forward it to them. Uh, can arginine help scleroderma, and how much? Well, arginine uh, does, it works in, in, in three areas of the body. One is, of course, in the cardiovascular. It also works in the, uh, has the ability across the brain barrier and help with the, the brain as well as the nervous system. But it also helps um, the immune system. And arginine has been shown to uh, fight viruses, bacteria, and parasites by boosting the T cell count, the B cell count, as well as the NK cell count, which is your natural killer cells. So um, yes, it, it does help with uh, um, you know any form of cancer as well as uh, any type of skin disorder because really, um, you know, your, your, your skin is actually your largest organ and a lot of circulation goes to your skin. So when you increase circulation, you increase oxygen, you increase healing. So it will help with uh, scler scleroderma. Got it. Derma. Derma. Okay, great. All right. Uh... Okay, someone just said she logged in late, and I would know where to, I would like to know where to find it. I'll send you Dr. Steve's information in a little bit. Uh, golly, uh, I, uh, like I said, we have we have to we have to finish around this up right now. Um, the, okay, the, the person asks the question about the LVAD is a left ventricular. Uh, 
gosh, it's all disappeared. All right, sorry, folks. Uh, this kind of wraps it up. If you want, if you if you still have questions, you're not satisfied with, please email us. The website is at the very top there. I'm just going to remind you that J.C. Spencer will be on next week to talk about a very very uh, important topic called trehalose. It's a sugar that is doing great things for the body. Remember, you, you want to know about everything about health, and you can pick and choose, but just be aware of the things that are very very important. And um, I think arginine plays a fund foundational, fundamental core uh, has a core place in our health because the cardiovascular system, like Dr. Sami and Dr. Harry have just have both clearly mentioned, it's crucial. <laughs> to say the least, about uh, for our health. So I want to thank uh, our doctors again. Uh, Dr. Steve, Dr. Harry, do you have any final words you want to leave with the audience? Yeah, I'll just uh, say thank you so much, David, for providing this platform. Uh, it's a tremendous service, and uh, I think, you know, personally I feel that everyone that's listening anyway, just get that word out because uh, we just need to uh, impact more people in this country because heart disease is not going down. It's not getting under control. We need to get the word out there to people. I know Dr. Harry is, uh, is just an honor to be on a call and to be able to introduce you. And thank you so much for your dedication in this particular field. And, uh, and so, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, David. Thank you, Steve. And uh, we're still going to get together to do the chiropractic thing very soon, aren't we? Yep. We're looking forward to it. Dr. Harry? I'll just leave you with this uh, verse in the Bible says, Today I have given you a choice between life and death. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. That is good. Now, wh where's that? Which scripture is that? It's uh, Deuteronomy 30.19. The Deuteronomy 30.19. Thank you. That's... Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that people don't realize the decisions they're making today affect seven generations. So that's why that verse is so important. Wow, that's deep. Thank you, Dr. Harry. And again, thank you, Dr. Steve. Folks, thanks for, for hanging with us. This has been a two-hour presentation. And every, almost everybody is still here. So thank you, and you have a great night, and see you next week. God bless.